Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Geomatics Engineering and in today's lecture we are going to talk about electromagnetic radiation and electromagnetic spectrum. As you all know that we have started remote sensing and image interpretation subject from our PG DGI course that is PG Diploma in Geoinformatics from IGNU. So in last lecture we have already talked about principle of remote sensing, some history of remote sensing and there was a remaining part from this unit itself that is electromagnetic radiation and spectrum that's why i have mentioned the name of this lecture as lecture 1 part 2 so let's start this lecture about electromagnetic radiation and spectrum so before talking about electromagnetic radiation we will talk about energy so what is energy so the ability to do work is known as energy so whenever you transfer any object from one place to another place so this ability to transfer this object from this place to this another place is known as energy and there are types to define the way of energy transfer so there are three types to define the way of energy transfer conduction convection and radiation so what is conduction so whenever one body collides with the other body then there is an energy transfer that is known as conduction then the other type of energy transfer is convection so when the energy transferred from one place to other by physically moving the body so whenever you are physically moving any object from one place to another pl place then the way of energy transfer is known as convection and the third type of energy transfer is radiation that we are going to talk about in this whole lecture so when there is energy transfer in vacuum as the reason between sun and earth so as sun is having a high amount of energy at his surface so this high amount of energy gets transferred to earth and the space is vacuum so this type of energy transfer is known as radiation so from this radiation we will talk about electromagnetic radiation as in the name it is mentioned the electro and magnetic so it is a combination of electric plus magnetic energy and this electromagnetic radiation can be defined under two type of model the wave model and particle model so the production of this electromagnetic radiation its propagation interaction is all under explained under these two models the wave model and the particle model so what is wave model so as in the name mentioned wave model whenever the energy travels in a form of wave so who told about this so in 1860 jc maxwell conceptualized about electromagnetic radiation as an electromagnetic energy or a wave that travels through space at a speed of light so whenever the energy transfer is between sun and earth it travels in a form of wave at a speed of light so speed of light is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. So according to wave model light travels like a wave and this wave is having a combination of electric and magnetic field. So these two fields are at a right angle to each other and are perpendicular to the direction of propagation. So what does this mean? So from this picture what is direction of propagation? So the direction from which the energy is transferred. Like the wave is traveling from sun to earth. So the direction from sun to earth is known as direction of propagation. So these magnetic and electric field are perpendicular to this direction of propagation and these two fields are at a right angle to each other. Right angle to each other and perpendicular to the direction of propagation. So as this energy is transferred in a wave motion, so wave motion is transfer of energy without matter. So there is no matter available. So these motions are defined under two type of wave. The transverse wave and the longitudinal wave. What is transverse wave? Like how an ocean wave travels to the shore while a boat just moves up and down. Like ocean waves are like this. And due to this ups and downs, the boat just moves ups and downs. So this up-down movement of wave is known as transverse wave. And longitudinal waves can be defined from a spring. Like a spring is compressed like this. And if you stretch this spring in the horizontal direction, in the same direction this 
spring will move like for example sound wave so in sound wave the particles that make up the wave move in the same direction where the wave is traveling so these longitudinal waves are like moving horizontally and these transverse wave are moving vertically then within the wave motions there are some parameters that characterize this wave motion so these parameters are amplitude wavelength and frequency so what is amplitude so as you can see from this picture this in this cycle there is two tops are there and one bottom is there so this higher point is known as trough and this lower or minimum point is known as crest so amplitude define that how high the wave is in the both direction the upward or downward direction how high the wave is defined under amplitude next parameter is wavelength so wavelength is the distance between two corresponding points on the wave and it is measured in meters like i have talked about these two higher points and there are also two lower points so these corresponding two troughs or two crest so the distance between the continuous two troughs or two crest is known as wavelength and it is measured in meters and what is frequency so the number of cycles a wave passing a fixed point per unit time is measured in hertz like these are cycles so how many number of cycles are passing through a fixed point per unit time is known as frequency and it is measured in hertz so whenever there are higher number of cycles within a time there will be a higher frequency and when there are low number of cycles the frequency will be low so in this way by using these three parameters amplitude wavelength frequency we have defined about the wave motion and its property we have also talked about troughs and crests now we will understood about the particle model So as in the name mentioned the particle model so whenever the electromagnetic energy is described in terms of joules and electron volts that energy will fall under particle model so here the rate of transfer of energy from one place to another like from sun to earth is termed as a flux of energy what does mean by flux so flux means flow and it is measured in watts so in this case the light is a stream flow of particles like there will be a flow of particles that are known as photons so how these photons are generated so whenever the matter excited thermally or by nuclear process or by bombardment with other radiation photons are emitted like sun is already having a high amount of energy so there on the surface of earth there are so many nuclear process and bombardment due to its high energy are happening so due to these process the high number of photons are emitted from the surface of sun and these photons moves at the speed of light and these photons also exist as reflected or a absorbed radiation and these photons are associated with the amount of energy that can be described from this formula that is q is equal to hv so the energy in that photon is expressed from this q h is planck constant and v is frequency so from this formula we can see that the amount of energy is directly proportional to frequency so if the wave is having a higher frequency will have a higher amount of photon energy included in that so these two are directly proportional whenever there is a higher amount of energy the wave will having a higher frequency like in gamma rays x rays they are having a higher amount of frequency and having a higher energy so from this we understood about the particle model movement of light from sun to earth so from this we can say that electromagnetic radiation is both wave and a stream of particles like wave falls under wave model and stream of particle falls under particle model and this electromagnetic radiation is a combination of different type of wavelength and different type of frequency waves so these all range from higher to lower frequency higher to lower wavelength can be described specifically under electromagnetic spectrum so what is electromagnetic spectrum 
so this is range of all electromagnetic radiation that is organized by their frequency or their wavelength so this electromagnetic spectrum includes all types of lights like includes those that are invisible to human eye also like such as radio waves microwaves infrared ultraviolet rays and x rays gamma rays these are not visible to human eye but they are explained under this electromagnetic spectrum the whole range that are visible to human eye and that are not visible to human eye all are explained under electromagnetic spectrum so from this image you can see these seven types of rays falls under electromagnetic spectrum so if we talk about them from higher frequency to lower frequency or lower wavelength to higher wavelength we can say it about like gamma rays x rays ultraviolet visible infrared microwave and radio waves so we can learn all these names from their first letter like g x u v i m r so this i have arranged it from higher frequency to lower frequency the gamma ray x ray ultraviolet visible infrared microwave and radio wave so from this image we can see that gamma ray and x rays are having a higher number of frequency and in continuation we can see that these radio waves microwaves infrared are having low frequency and where there is higher frequency the distance between two troughs or two crests is low it means the wavelength is low so from this we can say that wavelength is inversely proportional of frequency and where there is wavelength is higher the distance between two trough and two crest is higher the frequency is low like the number of oscillation per time is low that's why they are inversely proportional if we talk about the size of these rays like gamma ray x ray are so smaller in size like their size of a atomic nuclear atom ultraviolet are equal to the size of a mo molecule visible rays are equal to the size of a protons then in continuation the size of these ray increased like infrared is equal to a size of a pin point the microwave is equal to size of honey bee then the radio waves are equal to size of a human body are equal to a size of building and from this we can also talk about their energy level like if they can penetrate our earth atmosphere or not so the gamma ray x ray and ultraviolet they are having a high frequency low wavelength so they cannot travel too much so they cannot penetrate earth atmosphere visible range yes they can penetrate the earth atmosphere and these visible wavelength are visible to our eyes human eyes some part of infrared and microwave can penetrate the earth surface and some part of it can not the radio wave yes they can penetrate the earth atmosphere and from this picture you can also learn about the wavelength range of all these rays and also about their frequency range values next we'll talk uh, about them individually that to uh, what are the application of these wavelength in our daily human life so if we talk about radio waves having a higher wavelength and a very lower frequency so these are produced by vibrating or oscillating electrons in a transmitting aerial they can travel large distances due to their higher wavelength so under the radio waves there are long and short waves radio signals are used and in daily life radio waves are used for communication purpose like in radios we used to listen about fm signals am signals so fm signals are about 3 meter wavelength and am signals are about 100 meter wavelength and the short wave radio signals can be transmitted long distances like these waves are beamed upwards from monitoring stations and then reflected back to earth from ionosphere then the communication part is happened and the am radio waves can travel around large obstacles and travel further than fm like am radio waves can travel more than fm radio waves but they are in lower quality than fm and often these suffer from interferences so fm radios are having a higher quality with lower interference and am radios can travel larger than fm but they are having lower quality due to some interferences then we are having a microwaves so microwaves are absorbed by water fats and sugars in foods so due to this property of microwave there 
is an machine made named as microwave which has a application to heat up the food so microwave makes food molecules vibrate and heat the food up and glass paper and plastics don't absorb microwaves and metal also reflects microwaves that's why in the market there are so many containers made of glass paper plastic says that they are microwave safe like they don't absorb microwaves so there are microwave safe containers where you can put the food and only the food molecules will be heat up not the container then we are having infrared radiation so infrared radiation is known as heat from the sun that is known as infrared so infrared is close to red light like if we talk about visible range so visible range is a combination of these seven lights violet indigo blue green yellow orange and red and infrared is near to the red light so they are near to the red light so their frequency is below the red light so objects having a temperature above 0 kelvin they emit infrared so they are basically heat from the sun next is visible light so visible light is essential for life on earth we can our human eyes can see visible light so visible light basically a white light which consists of different colors like i have already talked violet indigo blue green yellow orange red vib pure each of this light is having a different wavelength and different frequency so most of the human can see all these wavelength and the greatest sensitivity from these all color the green is having the greatest sensitivity and from this picture we can see that if we follow this range violet indigo blue green yellow orange red we can see that the violet is having higher frequency and the red is having lower frequency like the wavelength is larger here and here the wavelength is smaller so due to this property of these colors at the time of sunrise and sunset we see the sky in the color of red because of its lower frequency and higher wavelength so higher wavelength waves can travel more than the lower frequency waves that's why at the time of sunrise and sunset all the higher frequency waves travels quicker and the remaining wavelength in the sky are red and orange so that's why the sky appears as in the oranges or red color next is ultraviolet light so ultraviolet light is a radiation with a higher frequency than the violet light like from the vib gyo the violet indigo blue green yellow orange red the ultraviolet is light nearer to visible lights violet color so that's why the ultraviolet is having a higher frequency and the sunlight contains some part of ultraviolet light you cannot see ultraviolet light but it does cause sunburn that's why there are products in the market known as sunscreen they claims that they can protect us from ultraviolet light which causes sunburns and many object fluoresces under ultraviolet light they appear brightens because they absorb ultraviolet light and emits visible light which we can see that and ultraviolet lights are also used to sterilize objects here is a picture of some minerals known as fluorescent minerals under ultraviolet lights they appear brighten under ultraviolet light next is x rays so william rongten discovered x rays in 1895 x rays are having a higher frequency so that it can penetrate object therefore they are useful in finding flaws and checking structures and x rays are very helpful in medical science so that it can penetrate your body muscles and see the flaws under your body so due to its higher energy of the radiation it can damage cells and tissues of bodies where ever there is a exposure of x rays always wear lead shields to protect your body from x rays then we have gamma rays so gamma rays from all the waves gamma rays is having the highest frequency so wavelength of about 100 billion th meter is gamma ray it can only be stopped by thick sheets of lead or concrete so these gamma rays are produced in the making of nuclear power so wherever there is nuclear power exposure there is exposure of gamma rays and it is harmful for human life so if medically a patient can be injected with a small amount of radioactive material that emit gamma rays this can then be detected by a positron emission tomography scanner and this gamma rays are harmful for human health and body so that's all about 
these lights applications i hope you understood about the electromagnetic spectrum and the different wavelength and frequency rays and their applications if you are having any doubt please let me know in the comment section thank you very much